Good afternoon. Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Tiernan Payne here from Tree Ripe Fruit Company in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Tiernan, thanks for jumping on with me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It is my pleasure. I'm really excited to share your business with our clients and community today. It sounds like a very healthy and exciting business. So if you're okay with it, I'm going to start by asking you six questions. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Here we go. When people ask you what Tree Ripe Fruit Company does, how do you describe it? Usually we would say, you know how it's so hard to get good fruit at the grocery store? That's kind of why we exist. And so what we do is we work directly with farmers that are in the best regions for growing a particular fruit. So if it's citrus, we go to Florida or California. And then we identify the people that are really growing the best of, of whatever it is that we're looking for. Uh, farms that are really obsessed with quality and you know growing something because it tastes really good. And then we connect that farm and what they're growing with our customers. And so we do that through physical locations uh, throughout the Midwest. We are, we're up to over 200 locations in the Midwest uh, in different growing seasons, uh, but also most of our fruits available through our website, delivering right to people's homes. So really it's that goal of getting the best fruit to our customers as, as fast as possible. That's incredible. And that's so important because there's nothing worse than getting fruit or bringing it home from the grocery store and having it rotten or just like something you don't want to eat at all or not even ready to eat. So that's incredible work. Thank you for doing that. Mm -hmm. What were your plans when you started your business and how have they changed? Yeah, so uh, I wasn't our founder. Um, I own the business now, but my grandfather started uh, our business. And he started really, I mean, this was really a side hustle. This wasn't uh, a business plan where he was setting out to do uh, a lot of big things. Um, you know, he was a serial entrepreneur his whole life and he got to retirement age and he, he was in trucking at that time and he worked with Florida Citrus Groves. He was uh, hauling into the Midwest and it was the idea of taking it directly to, to customers because he saw something that was really unique and special. You know, you couldn't get this type of citrus in the grocery store. Uh, you'd have to have it mailed to your house and it was high prices. And so to bring it with his truck directly to people, you know, he put an ad in the newspaper and said, truckload sale, Florida citrus. And amazingly people showed up. So it really started as something as like retirement gig, keep the family kind of together. Maybe, maybe he'd make a little money doing it. Um, but he was able to uh, kind of stumble onto this and then once we got going, it was, you know, the customers that really demanded us to change, and expand and grow. And, you know, eventually it wasn't, well, you know, only Florida citrus. Well, what else can you do the rest of the year? You know, so it became Georgia peaches and Michigan blueberries. And that just led into this concept of saying, let's connect people to these, these farms and, and get this uh, quality of fruit that they really wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Very, very unique. And I know we were talking before I pressed record today and you said a lot of people haven't even really tasted what a real Georgia peach tastes like. That's pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, what we see is you could take the perfect peach and put it into the traditional grocery chain and it's never going to turn out right because uh, peach, for example, the longer it's in refrigeration, it's going to get mealy and mushy and, and gross. So part of it is even if it's grown perfectly, you have to get it to people a lot faster than groceries able to do that. So that's the, the other part of it is getting a grower. You know, we work with the oldest peach farm in Georgia. They've been doing it since 1880s wow. and they're amazing, but they give you an amazing peach. You got to get it to people. And so when you have that, people are like, this is what a, a peach is supposed to taste like. Like it's, it's something special and, and something that they haven't really experienced before. Wow, that is special. So the next question I have for you is, what is the biggest way that you impact the community? Obviously, besides bringing awesome, fresh, healthy fruit to our community. Yeah, I think the way that we impact uh, the community, and we're in a lot of communities, so we get to do this kind of over and over again. Uh, it's, it's really special to be a part of, even a, a small part of feeding people. <clears throat> so you know, our growers talk about this all the time. You know, it's a privilege, it's a responsibility to be able to cultivate something, to grow it, to get it to where uh, you can get it in someone's hands and they can feed their family with that. Mm -hmm. So when we come into a, a town and it's a, the summer and you have hundreds of people waiting for this, these are families. These are, are people who uh, are able to get something that they wouldn't get anywhere else. And so 
I've always kind of felt like we didn't want to position ourselves as a premium product for a premium price. Mm-hmm. We want to give people a premium product for a price that makes sense, that it gives them value. So, you know, our, most of our products are sold in bulk. So in the mm-hmm. summer, if people come and they get a big box of peaches, they're going to pay a similar price uh, per pound as they would pay at the grocery store, but they're going to get something that they, they wouldn't even have access to. So I, I think that impacts communities really positively. And we see it too in, you know, it, it might be overstating it, but it, you feel a lot of happiness and joy when you come and people are excited. They plan their summers around this. And wow. so they come out and it's like, it's just a, a, lot, of, a lot of happy people. So I think it's a, a positive effect on, on communities and families. Absolutely. And when people are finding joy in that, they're passing that forward too. So very, very yeah. cool. What is one challenge that you have faced that other business owners can learn from? Yeah, this is a loaded question, I think, because (laughs) as um, a business owner or an entrepreneur, and as we were talking about, there's so many different things, so many different challenges. Mm -hmm. For me, I think the biggest thing was you get uh, excited about a lot of different things, and you're also having to deal with a lot of things. So I had to get hyper-focused in what we were doing and saying, you know, something works and now you want to move on to the next thing and maybe get that next winner or, or add another product. And that takes away from, I think, what you're doing at times. And it also makes your life really, really stressful. Mm-hmm. So to be able to have focus to say, what's really working? What does our customer say about it? What, is, what does our customer want? Mm-hmm. You know, instead of trying to guess that for yourself, you take a look at what, what they're saying, what you're doing and saying, we're going to double down on this. We're going to do what works, keep that focus in on, on where it should be. And maybe you can do things in, in smaller areas or, um, you know, have, having the patience to be able to say, I want to do these things, but it's going to take more time than I, I think. I know that's a problem for me is I always want to get on to the next thing. And so slowing down, being present, being patient and focused, I think was key to us being able to, to continue to grow without you know, just your head exploding or burning out. Absolutely. You bring up a couple of really good points. One of them, listening to your customers, because a lot of times business owners have this great idea that they think everybody's going to love. And it's not always that case, listening to your customers and making sure that you're serving them in the way they need is more important, right? And then we talk about importance and focus, just like you were saying, our coaches actually coach their clients to make sure that they focus on the urgent and important, because a lot of times things will be urgent, but not important, or they'll be important, but not urgent. So that important, but not urgent falls behind and that's the stuff you should be working on right so that's absolutely a great point you bring up about focusing and really choosing what you need to focus on so. yeah I think that's that's so important I, I worked I was I had the privilege of working with my mother-in-law for a number of years and and she would say putting out fires and that's what it feels like a lot of times where you're just you're just putting out fires but to be able to just slow down and it's okay to work on a couple of things, you know, we feel a lot of pressure as business owners to, we always have to be going and going and going, but to like to slow down and say, we're going to focus on this thing. Uh, It Mm -hmm. it just helps me for sure. Absolutely. Thank you for that. The fifth question I have for you is what does the future look like to you and a tree ripe? And do you have an exit plan? Yeah, I think if you asked me five years ago about an exit plan, I, I would have had a great answer for you. And What I kind of found was, and I've always been in small business. I grew up in a restaurant. Um, We've been doing this for a a good chunk of my life. I love business. I love being able to uh, be an operator and and be involved in all those things. But I think when I was able to slow down and kind of fall in love with the process and the here and now and the present, you stop worrying about the future. You know, you stop worrying about that exit plan and you're really in the dirt and you have your hands and everything. And for me, that's where I really started enjoying it. I I enjoyed the process. And so I don't think too much about the future anymore in terms of uh, an exit plan, uh, but more in terms of what are we going to do? What are we going to be able to do uh, with our business uh, going forward? And so the future, I think, for us and TreeRipe is just continuing to do what we're doing. We're, we're finding people that we want to work with, partner farms, we're finding new things, uh, things that really make our customers happy and that they're enjoying and, uh, and really just focusing on that. We do have some 
consumer goods kind of in the, the works uh, where we better to work on. So things that we're putting a, a small percentage of our time towards, but we're really excited to get out there and, and for people to see. Wow. That's really powerful when you're just enjoying the moment that you're in as a business owner. So thank you for sharing that. All subjects open. What inspires you most? Yeah, this is such a great question. Um, <clears throat> I think everybody in business needs to have something that inspires them uh, because as we talked about, there's always something that is requiring our attention. It's, it's urgent. But for me, what I would say is <clears throat> over, you know, you go back decades ago and business was done in a very traditional way. It was always a certain way that it had to be done. And it, it felt like it was, you know, there was always a gatekeeper. And now there, we don't have that. Like the landscape is so different. Anyone can do whatever they want that they're passionate about. And so what you're seeing now is some really amazing people doing just amazing things that we wouldn't have seen before. So whether it's content creators or uh, the person with a food truck, or, you know, we work with a lot of restaurants in, in Milwaukee. We work with about 30 different restaurants to see the creativity, to see the innovation, to see people that are doing things because they love doing it. And, and that's really the motivation. Like, yeah, maybe they'll turn it into a seven, eight figure business at some point, but that's not what it's about. They're doing it because they love it. For me, I see that stuff every day and that, that motivates me, that inspires me because that's what I wanna bring to our company. We wanna do things because we love doing it and we love our mission and really not, not worry too much about what could happen or what's down the road, but uh, let that uh, kind of drive your innovation. Absolutely. That's incredible. Thank you for sharing that as well. Very inspiring. Kiernan, if people want to get in touch with you or purchase this awesome fruit, what is the best way for them to do that? Yeah, the best way is to go to our website and that's tree-ripe.com. Go to our website, sign up for our email list. Uh, we're, we're on all social channels, Tree Ripe Fruit on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, but get in touch with, with us, see where our truck's going to be because uh, in the summer, when we come with our, our peach truck, we're, we're in over 200 cities around the, the Midwest. So wherever you live in, in the Midwest, we probably come close to you. Awesome. Very, very exciting. It's such a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you for your business. Thank you for your service to the community, bringing great fruit to all of us. And I wish you an amazing 2023. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Thank you.